In this tutorial, we are going to talk about Editable Poly. Now, this is a tool which will allow you to um, go ahead and, and edit your items furthermore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a box. I will go to my modify panel and I will right click on these uh, numbers that I have. You probably won't have these numbers as being 656. Six. You probably have them all being as one. Um, when you have these two arrows like this, what you can do is right click on them and they will give you the minimum value you could have in that box. So if I right click here, the minimum numbers I can have is 111. One, one, and right clicking on each will um, take the value to minimum. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start editing this. But before I do, I might give this just a bunch of polygons so that I have something to work with for the sake of this tutorial. Now I want to convert this to editable poly, but before you do that, there's one thing you need to have in mind. And that is the fact that 3D Studio Max at this stage considers this item, this mesh, to be a box. And the properties of a box is that a box has a length, width, height, and you know the segments that goes for the, that go for the length, width, and height. So 3ds Max considers this object to be a box with these parameters. If I right click on my um, object and go to convert to and then click on convert to editable poly, even though the object hasn't changed at all, 3ds Max no longer considers the object to be a box. It considers it, considers it to be an editable poly. <clears throat> an editable poly has different selections and it has all these menus that come with it. First, we want to talk about the selections. That's your vertex mode, shortcut being one. And vert vertices are, are um, these points that you can move around and you can edit them. Remember, because this is one vert itself, you cannot rotate a single vert. However, you can rotate multiple verts. In order to select multiple um, vertices, you hold control and you select um, the additional verts. And if you want to remove them, you hold Alt and you click them, and that will deselect. <clears throat> you can, however, rotate two vertices because two vertices make one edge. In order to go to edge mode, you can either click on this icon over here or you can press 2 on your keyboard and that will go to edge mode and then you can select these edges and you could move the edges, rotate the edges or scale the edges. We have borders and elements. We'll get back to these um, but for now what you need to know is that border mode is a subcategory of edge mode and element is a subcategory of polygon. We'll come back to these and polygons are the faces. <clears throat> now, each of these have a section that says edit polygons. If I was in edge mode, it would, set, it would say edit edges or edit vertices or edit borders, edit elements. Um, we're gonna start with polygon. I'm going to select a polygon and I'm going to make sure that the edit polygons um, menu is expanded so you don't want anything like this you want this to be expanded so you can see the um, the options we have multiple tools here that we, should, we which we can use but right now what I'm going to talk about is, is, is a few of them we're not going to go through all of them at this stage extrude will create a um, new additional set of polygons being extruded from the polygon that you had selected you don't necessarily have to have a polygon selected in order to extrude it. For example, this polygon here, I don't have it selected. But even though I have the extrude tool on, I can still select that polygon and click and drag. Or I could just click and drag without selecting it first. If I wanted to extrude this by a specific value, and because um, by just clicking and dragging, I can't really see um, the value of this being extruded, what I could do is click on the box next to extrude that says settings. And that will give me numbers. So if I wanted this to come out by 0.1 meters, which is basically 10 centimeters, I could enter the number in there and I could say tick. And then that will apply uh, the extrude. If I click on extrude again, and if I say, let's say 0.3 here, but I want to add additional extrusion to the, to the same polygon later on. So rather than clicking on tick, I could click on plus. That will apply the 
exude that I was initially asking for and then I could go here and change this value to 0.2 for example and I hit tick what that will do is it'll extrude them so let's do that again so I can extrude this once 0.3 and say plus so that's done and just make sure you hit plus so that it extrudes it and then I'm going to click on uh, 0.2 and I say tick <coughs> Next we have something called bevel. Bevel is almost the exact same as extrude. The difference is you can extrude it out, but before you know, the bevel is finished and finalized, you can let go and then you'll be able to adjust the end polygon size. So because of that reason, when we go to the settings of bevel, we'll see multiple options, two options. One being for how much you want to extrude it, and the other one being the size um, of 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 uh, the final piece. Then we have something called inset. Inset <coughs> allows us to create the exact same polygon on top of that polygon, um, which means if I was to go to inset and click and drag, it will create a topology of the same polygon being made. This is great for creating, let's say, doors and windows, for example. So if I wanted to um, create a window here, I could insert it a little bit, and then I could maybe extrude it in a little bit. Maybe I could insert it again, and this time extrude it out. And by using inset and extrude, I have created a window. So that's it for um, edit polygons. <clears throat> We're going to go edges. Now, once you understand edit polygons, the rest will be quite simple and straightforward because they're, the rest are almost exact, the exact same thing except a few different changes. Um, in edge mode, you have extrude, which means you can still extrude um, edges as well. But it's not only about um, how much that edge comes out, it's also about the base. So if I click, if I click and drag and um, move my, my mouse up and down, that will determine how much the edge comes forward. But if I move it left and right, it will show how much that polygon uh, or the base of, of that edge expands. Again, because of that reason, if you click over here, you can see that there are uh, two different values, one for extruding the edge out itself and then the other one for determining the size of the base. We have something called chamfer. Chamfer is very useful. This edge, or these edges, I'm holding control to select multiple. These edges, um, they are very sharp. So if you if you were to consider this polygon and this polygon, this edge is very sharp and it's almost a it's, it's exactly a 90 degree angle. What I could do in this case is click on chamfer and click and drag. That will divide my um, edges into two. I'm going to control Z that. I'm going to go to the settings. Now I'm going to determine how much I want the space between the two edges to be. And if I want to have any additional edges in between in order to make this smoother, I can just click and drag on this and move this left and right. That will determine how many extra polygons go there and it will create a very nice curve. And I can say I'm happy. Because I've already done or applied that chamfer, if I was to come over here, for example, I'm selecting the edges and I can press Z to zoom into the edge. If I just click on chamfer and click on drag in, you can see that it's not giving me two edges, it's giving me the same amount of edges that I had over here. This is because 3ds Max will remember the values that you use used previously and it will apply the same values um, to, the, to the next chamfer you want to do. Now, to talk about bridging, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to select this polygon and I'm going to extrude it out and extrude it out again a little bit and extrude upwards, upwards and upwards. The reason I've done this is because I wanted these polygons to be facing these polygons. What I'm going to do is 
turn the extrude off, select this polygon and press delete on my keyboard. So now that polygon is hollow and we can see inside it. I'm going to select this other polygon and press delete as well. So that's gone as well. Now these four edges that we have over here, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. These are what we refer to as border edges. That's because these edges are connected to a polygon on one side only. For example, this edge is only connected to a polygon on this side and there's no polygon over here. However, other edges like these, for example, they have a polygon over here and a polygon on this side. So this edge specifically is um, not a border edge because it's got polygons on both sides. That's not the case in these uh, for these four edges. Same thing applies for these four. These four, because we deleted the polygon, they're not actually um, connected to two polygons on both sides, so they are border edges. And that's where border comes in. If I click one edge, one border edge that is, it will select all the other border edges connected to that border edge. So I could select that as well. In case of having a border edge, I could select one border edge and select the other border edge by holding control and then click on bridge and it will connect them and this will only and only happen if those edges are border edges so for example considering that this edge is not a border edge because it has two polygons on both sides and let's say this edge for example not also, also not being a border edge because it has a polygon here and a polygon there if I was to hit bridge nothing would happen because they're not border edges let me delete this polygon. Also, what I could do, I could select this edge being a border edge and select this edge being another border edge and hit bridge. And that will close off that gap for me. What I could also do to close off this gap is select those four edges and then hit cap. But I'm selecting the four edges using border tool and I'm going to hit cap. That will also close that off for me. Now back to vert mode. <clears throat> in vert mode, we have something called remove. Now, it's very important to understand that removing a vert is not the same as deleting a vert. If I was to select this vert and I was to press delete on my keyboard, it deletes the vert and all the polygons that were connected to that vert and it gives me this hole. But if I, if I was to press remove, the polygon is still there, but the edges that were connected to that vert are disappeared now. So there's a difference between remove and deleting. The same thing applies to edge mode as well. So if I select an edge and hit remove, it removes that one vert. But if I select the edge and press delete, it will make a hole inside the, um, inside the box. What I also have is break, which doesn't always come in handy, but it's good to know what it does. If I break a vert, it will divide them out. So let's see. So that one is for this polygon. This one is for that polygon. If I select it again, that's for this polygon and then that's for that polygon. That's what break does. It breaks it up so that the polygons can become separate. We have something called weld and target weld. Very useful, very handy, and very common. We'll be using, you'll be using them a lot, actually. What weld does is that if I have two vertices selected, now these vertices must be on the same edge, or there must be border vertices, which means a vert which are uh, on, on edges that are border edges, basically. We'll get to that and explain that as well. In this case, if I was to press weld on my on my uh, editable poly section, nothing happens because these two are too far apart from each other to be welded. I could go to the setting and I could increase the threshold up to a point where they could meet up. And what it does is, if I con press Ctrl Z, it will take this vert and this vert and bring them in the middle. They meet at, at the middle point. But target weld doesn't work that way. With target weld, you don't need to have any vertices selected. I can click on target weld. I can say 
you go there and it will take that one word and bring it here so weld on its own will kind of you need multiple vertices selected and it will bring them to the center point but target weld is when you say you go there for example or you go there and this only happens when the vert is uh, the vertices are on the same edge so for example this vert and this vert they are not on the same edge there's no edge connecting them so if I said click on this and try to click on that nothing will happen because they're not on the same edge what I also have is connect connect will create those edges which are not between vertices so it between this vert and this vert there are no edges and if I wanted to target weld this to this I can't because there are no edges what I could however do is select them both by holding control and then hit connect that will create that connection between the two vertices now that I have this line I could go to target weld select one and say you go there in this case it will work back to vert mode sorry <clears throat> And at, up to this stage, I believe this is the basics of Editable Poly, what you need to do. Just to show you how you could use these tools in order to create something. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to start with a box. This box has, let's say, Editable Poly. It has no segments. And I want to turn this into a house. I'm going to right click, convert to Editable Poly and what I need is a line to go from here to here because I did not create that line before I convert my box to an editable poly I can't just go and say length segments height segments or something and, and add the additional lines so I need to create those additional lines myself so I'm gonna click on the edge click on this edge hold control click on the other edge and I'm gonna hit connect on my key uh, on my um, Editable poly that will create a line at the center of these two. What I could also do is click on the settings. I could say how many edges I want and where I want, um, if I have multiple ones, how far apart do I want them to be from each other and where do I want them. In this case, we only need one at the center, so I'll create that there. And now I could drag that one line up in order to create this house. What I may want to do also is click on this vert and this vert and connect them and this vert and this vert and connect them. Now I could go ahead and select one side of these polygons for example and actually what I might do, what I want to do is I want to put two windows here. The, the best thing to do that in order to create two windows is to divide the two sections. So I'm going to click this edge and click on this edge and make sure both edges are selected by holding control. Hit connect so I have that connected there. I'm going to click on this and this and this. Hit connect so now I have four polygons here. I'm going to select the top two and I want to inset them. If I go to inset and I drag this it's creating an inset that's really good but it's not separating two it's treating both polygons as one group in order to apply this inset setting to them individually I can click on this and by right now by default it's a two group I could say by polygon and they will have their own individual and separate insets press tick and now I could say extrude to the negative a little bit maybe and then insert again and then maybe this time extrude outwards a tiny bit so now I've created like a frame and a window that could go on the wall so you could use these tools in order to create um, different and extra shapes I hope this tutorial was useful